Glory to Jesus Christ, Yoshua HaMashiach, our Lord and Savior. Father, we wish to elevate your name. We wish to thank you, Father, for all things, for the breath of life. We thank you, Father, that even today we stand before you and are welcome before your throne in your glory, in your majesty, Lord. You have looked upon us. And having found us to be sinners, Lord, you have died for us as a man. You died for us as a man. Because there's no greater love but to give your life for your brother. And you have lived up to this standard yourself, Lord, by coming into the flesh to die for us. Allow us, Lord, to assemble ourselves unto your honor and not unto your dishonor. Alleluia. Glory to Jesus Christ. Amen. The assembly of the Lord, the congregation of the righteous, the wicked will not sit in the congregation of the righteous. What is the assembly of of the Lord. What is the congregation of the righteous? Matthew chapter 18 verse 19. Again I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Verse 20, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Where two or three are gathered together and in my name, we must gather around the name of the Lord. And this gathering has to be on a spiritual level. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 3. For I verily, as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already as though I were present concerning him that hath so done this deed. And so Paul is telling us that though he is absent in the body, he is present in spirit. The assembling of ourselves has to be around the name of the Lord, and it has to be spiritual. Meaning that we must have a spiritual perspective on our assembling. Christ is the head of the church, and the saints making up the church, the spiritual church, they are his body, and therefore they are attached to him. He is the head. We cannot come together as a body without having the head present spiritually, and therefore we gather around his name. We gather the head being present. Alleluia! And this presence of ours is one by which we spiritually assemble beyond the flesh because the wicked also can assemble together in the flesh but the presence of the spirit is not there and this is what we have we have Christ we have the son in whom there is life in the son is life 1 John chapter 5. And therefore, brothers and sisters, the assembling of the Lord, the assembly of the Lord, it is a different type of congregation from the assembly of the wicked. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 20. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice the devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. 
verse 21. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. There are two different tables. The congregation of the wicked do assemble, and they assemble in a carnal way. They assemble in a fleshly way. But there is no oil that they are working with that will make their cup run over. You see, the Lord sets up a table before us in front of our enemies, and our cup runneth over. But we are sitting at the table of the Lord. And while we sit at this table, we do not drink of the cup of devils. We drink of the cup of the Lord. Having assembled around Christ, who is the head, having assembled around his name, we drink the water of life that Christ offered to the Samaritan woman, which is not the physical water, but the spiritual water, the one that never runs out and leads unto eternal life. I am that water of life. Likewise, because our assembly is spiritual, we are not seated at a table where the things of this world are being presented to us. Because like Christ, our kingdom is not of this world. We are pilgrims on this earth. And we look for a better country. So therefore, we do not mind earthly things. And when we sit at the table of the Lord, we do not partake being sensual as brute beasts in the pleasuring of our flesh. And so like Daniel, we refuse the meats of the king. But rather, we prefer the things of the Spirit. Just like Jesus had spiritual meat, a meat that the world did not know of. It was a spiritual meat which was about doing the will of his Father. We assemble, but we assemble not as the world assembles. And further in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, about the gathering of the saints to have a meal together, we are told that this is a wrong way to assemble, that one would come having no food, and another would have plenty, and one starts eating before everybody has arrived. And then Paul asks, do you not then have homes, houses in which you can eat individually, rather than come together to orchestrate a mockery of the name of the Lord because you are assembling carnally rather than spiritually. And so, yes, the things of the Spirit war against the things of the flesh. And there has to be a distinction between the table at which the saints assemble and the table at which the mockers assemble. It has to be for the saints a congregation of the righteous that is assembling where everybody is of one mind, as Paul reminds the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, be ye all of one mind, all being looking to worship and elevate the name of the Almighty, Yehoshua, because he gives his glory to no one, and not looking rather to have your own glory, and when you sit at the table of the Lord, you should not, though there be a neighboring table where the wicked also assemble, you must not lend an ear to hear what they are saying, to then incorporate this speech, this corrupt speech, into the conversation that's taking place at the table of the righteous. No eavesdropping, because there is no fellowship between light and darkness, there is no connection possible. They are separate conversations. You see, in Job, the sons of God met before the Lord, and it is mentioned that Satan was in the midst of them. And so we have to be on the lookout when the wicked try to infiltrate and come and take a place and have a seat at the table of the Lord where we are gathering in light, 
because God is light and in him is no darkness. No darkness is to come and sit at the table of the Lord. And it should not remain undetected if this darkness try to come and sneak in. This is why Jude says, Contend earnestly for the faith that you have received, and be careful because there are ungodly men who will try to creep in unawares. They will be trying to be in the midst of you. But in 1 John chapter 2, verse 19, we see that in time, they will not sit in the congregation of the righteous, but they will be coming out of us because it has to be made manifest that they were not all of us. And so the assembly of the righteous has to be around the name of Yehoshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, the Almighty. It has to be a spiritual assembly where we are spiritually in harmony, being of one mind, being one body. It has to be that we eat a meat that is spiritual, which is to do the will of the Father, being zealous of good works, and not pleasuring our flesh in eating the meats of the kings of this world, because our kingdom is not of this world. And those who sit at the table of the wicked they are drinking the cup of devils, and they are sensual, and they speak of things they know not of when they try to speak of the gospel, because these things are spiritually discerned, and they don't have the spirit, they don't have the witness, they don't have the head, Jesus Christ, presiding over their assembly. And so there is only a false light where they are. And so they are still in darkness, as were the Pharisees in John chapter 9, verse 41, when they asked Jesus, are we blind? And he said, you are blind, because you say that you see, yet do you not even see that you are blind and will die in your sins? And so these sensual beasts, they ask amiss. They cater to their flesh. They ask amiss and they do not receive the blessings because they ask amiss. James chapter 4. And so we see that the wicked are carnally minded. They get their glory from one another. They have respect of persons. They give credence to the fact that Money is the root of all evil, because they will be found to run to do mischief and to covenant for a number of shekels. They will covenant for the death of another. They make their nets fat by lying in wait for the righteous. The assembly of the Lord, it has to be unto life, because it is around the name of Christ. And so we will see, for instance, how there is such a thing as the congregation of the wicked, where they work towards death. In the book of Esther, chapter 5, and we have here an example of the congregation of the wicked. Esther 5, verse 10. Nevertheless, Haman refrained himself, and when he came home, he sent and called for his friends and Zeresh his wife. And Haman told them of the glory of his riches, and the multitude of his children, and all the things wherein the king had promoted him, and how he had advanced him above the princes and servants of the king. Haman said moreover, Yea, Esther the queen did let no man come in with the king unto the banquet that she had prepared but myself. And tomorrow am I invited unto her also with the king. Yet all this availeth me nothing, so long as I see Mordecai the Jew sitting at the king's gate. Then said Zeresh his wife and all his friends unto him, Let a gallows be made of fifty cubits high, and tomorrow speak thou unto the king, that Mordecai may be hanged thereon. Then go thou in merrily with the king unto the banquet, and the thing pleased Haman, 
and he caused the gallows to be made. You see, the words of the Lord are spirit and they are life. Life abounds by way of the words of the Lord. But there are people who speak death. There is power in the tongue unto life and death. The people will tell about Jeremiah, let us kill him with the tongue. Here, Haman meets with his friends and his wife, and they have a seat together. They come in agreement. They are of one mind, but they don't have Christ in the midst. It is an assembly unto death, and that assembly is carnal. They are talking about elevation in the world. What will a man give to have the things of this world, even his soul? Haman discusses with his wife and his friends how he can bring about death into the world. They want to lie in wait for the righteous man, Mordecai. The speech of the wicked is unto death, but the words of life are unto life. They're unto not only life, but also resurrection, where death would want to intervene. O death, where is thy sting? And so we see that the wicked have their own assembly with their own meat, which is carnal. They have a mindset where they come together, but to do evil. The Bible says they get up in the morning and because they have power over their hands to go and do mischief and do evil, they practice it because they yet have power to do it. But the Bible also says that he who now letteth will let. And the Bible also warns that the wicked are not going to be acquitted and that he who being warned persists in his wrong ways, he will be destroyed swiftly without remedy but the wicked are showing us that they have their method of assembly and when Stephen spoke truth to the wicked it cut them at the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth the wicked were not able to stand the light that Stephen spoke it cut them to the heart and when they surrounded the house in Sodom, where Lot was staying, they were again of one mind, the wicked, and they had one goal, and they were being carnal. They wanted to know the man. You see? And their plan again was unto destruction, just as when they surrounded again the house of the Levite and his concubine, where they were staying. The wicked assemble unto death. But those who are righteous assemble unto life. But for that life to manifest, because the words that will be spoken at that table are going to be spirit and life, Christ has to be the head of the corner. He is the head of the body. And when the body comes together, it must not be headless. Christ must be at the center. Where two or three gather in my name, that is around my name, around my name, which is a name of power, which is a name of authority, which is a name of dignity, and which is a name of honor. There is honor attached to a name. There is power attached to a name. And there is respect attached to a name. And also there is a character that is attached to a name. And so we gather around this name. And it has to be a spiritual agreement. Where you agree together, it shall be done. In the name of Jesus Christ, by my Father who is in heaven. So we have seen, brothers and sisters, that the righteous come together to elevate the name of Yoshua HaMashiach, to worship the Almighty. And when they come together, they sit at a table where spiritual meat is served to do the will of the Father because we are servants of Christ. Paul will say, I am a slave of Jesus Christ because literally the word servant 
can be translated as being a slave submitted to the will of his master. And this is why the word says, the man who is set free from sin and who is no longer under bondage to sin, he actually is no longer a slave of sin, but it is so that he can become a slave of Christ. And so the righteous do the will of God. They serve the Lord being zealous of good works, and their works are the evidence of their faith. Their faith, hallelujah, which is rooted in the hope of things unseen. And in this congregation of the righteous, therefore there is no carnal meat, the meat of the kings of this world, but there is the spiritual meat, which is to do the will of the Father. They are in alignment, they are of one mind, coming together, every member working perfectly and seamlessly, one with another, where they are fitly joined by bands, working together led by the head, around which they are assembled. And when they see on the neighboring table that the wicked are assembled in their own way, drinking their own cup of debauchery, the righteous continue to drink the new wine, not the wine that is rent, but the new wine, the one that is kept for last at that wedding in John chapter 2. You have kept the good wine for last. The gospel, the good wine that leads unto life. And the righteous, when they have assembled, they do not incorporate the foul speech and the foul conversation of what is being said at the table of the unrighteous. The things of this world, the leaven, is kept at bay because a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. And so the righteous understand that there is no fellowship between light and darkness. And having assembled together in order where they are not carnally eating in a chaotic way unto the disgrace of the Lord, by one having food and another not having food, by eating, not being assembled together in an untimely manner, they don't do that, but they come as one to eat in order to honor and respect the name of Yoshua HaMashiach, being assembled in spirit around his name. And when they do that, they are praying they are in supplications, and they are focused on the Lord without any distractions. You see, when Jesus in Mark chapter 1 went to pray, He went to pray, and He went to be with the Father in isolation. There is intimacy needed. There is intimacy needed at the table of the righteous where we are with the Lord in private. Jesus went in private, and it is written that he was found, and then they told him, All men seek for thee. So there's always an invitation being made from the table of the wicked. It's coming from the table of the wicked to invite, to invite people sitting at the table of the righteous, to invite them over, to join them at the table of the wicked. Come, this meat of the world is really good. Do you want to try it? Come over to our table. They told Jesus, who had isolated himself to pray, sitting at the table of the righteous, leave that table and come with us. All men seek for thee. Come to the table of the wicked, where we get our glory one from another, and taste the meat of this world, the fame and the glory. And Jesus told them, I'm going to go to preach from town to town, for therefore have I come. In other words, I'm going to do the will of the Father, and I'm going to have the spiritual meat, which is to do the will of the Father. The meat of this world, the fame and the glory, I don't want it. And therefore we understand that there has to be an intimacy at the table of the Lord, at the table of the righteous, drinking the cup of the Lord, and not the cup of devils, which is inebriating, inebriated with the lust of this world, inebriated by the great harlot of Revelation 17, by her whoredoms, 
the well-favored harlot. And further, it is when there is a, an assembly of the saints in this matter that the mysteries of the kingdom, that we can dig in those mysteries. Paul says, when ye ought to be teachers, you are still drinking milk. We have to come to an assembly where now, being separate from the crowd, the secrets and the mysteries of the kingdom can be expounded on so that we go in the deep waters. We need that exclusive intimacy with the Lord so that we can dig deeper in the word of the Lord. Without unbelievers asking questions about the beggarly elements or else we cannot move forward. So therefore there is a time to evangelize and speak before the masses as Jesus did at the mount. But then it is written that after he separated himself with the disciples and he expounded all things unto them after in the intimacy of their assembly. And he told them, Unto you it is given to understand the mysteries of the kingdom, but unto them which are without, to them it is not given. So there is necessity for an assembly of the saints in a context where unbelievers are not present, so that being assembled around the Lord, the head, and around his name, we can now expound on the mysteries of the kingdom and eat meat and develop about the substance of our gospel and grow and discover all the richness of the wisdom of the Lord. In Him, in Christ, are hid all the treasures of wisdom and understanding. But this has to be a topic that is expounded on in private, in the intimacy of the table of the congregation of the righteous assembled around the name of the Lord being of one mind in spirit away from the carnal lusts of this world and not asking things amiss but asking things in the spirit desiring the knowledge that is spiritually discerned where two or three are gathered, I am in the midst of them. The assembly of the righteous, spiritual, orderly, not mingled, not marred by the leaven of this world, but pure, because to the pure all things are pure. Around the name of Christ, elevating the name of Christ, and not paying attention, not being distracted by the propositions and offers of this world to transition over unto another table. Because we are at the right table where there is milk and honey flowing, where the oil runneth over from the cup. Where we can come and eat without money, being rich in faith, having nothing but being able to make others rich where we have the proper apparel, the white robe, and are not told, how are you sitting here with an improper apparel? How are you not wearing a wedding garment? So those who would come unawares or try to come in unawares and infiltrate, they are taken away, bound hand and foot, and thrown in the furnace like chaff. They come out of us because it has to be made manifest that they are not of us. Because 1 John chapter 3 tells us that we have received a privilege of being adopted and being children of God. Oh, what manner of love. But having his seed remaining in us, we are not sinners anymore, willfully. No more willfully. Amen. And if we sin unwillfully, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, He is faithful to forgive us our sins. The congregation of the righteous. Oh, hallelujah! 
let us assemble and not neglect the assembling of ourselves in these last days because we have to bear one another's burdens, because we have to perfect one another, but let all things be done orderly. Alleluia. Glory to Jesus Christ, Yoshua HaMashiach. Father, may your name be elevated and all the glory be yours. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen.